Given that the horror genre is one that thrives off of imitation and the influence of what has come before, it is only natural that writers and filmmakers love to slip in a couple of cheeky references to their favourite scary movies. However, as opposed to referencing a film's existence as simply a film, many filmmakers instead prefer to use visual cues to imply that there is some kind of shared universe between their movie and another pre-existing property, whether it's just for fun or part of some kind of proper extended universe building. And with that in mind, I'm Josh from What culture horror and these are horror movies you didn't know were connected. Great, Pet Cemetery 2019 and Cujo. Outside of both novels pertaining to themes of animals going murderous and the tragic death of children, both Pet Cemetery and Cujo actually share a much greater link than many would believe, and their subsequent film adaptations paid tribute to this nugget of information. Partway through the recent retelling of Pet Cemetery, resident harbinger of doom Judd Crandall can be heard telling another attendee at Ellie's birthday party a story about a giant dog named nearby that went crazy and killed people. To some, this could just be a throwaway line of dialogue, but for anyone that's familiar with the works of Stephen King, this can mean only one thing. The rabies riddled hound from hell that is Cujo. Given that both Pet Cemetery and Cujo are written by King, it seems only natural that these two stories would cross over. The version of Maine that King writes about is a hotbed for bad luck and supernatural shenanigans, and this one little connection helps to further contextualise the strange and macabre world of King's work. Number 7 the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and The Howling. At one point during the madness that is The Howling, the audience is taken for a spot of retail therapy at a bookstore. It's not any bookstore, mind. This bookstore just so happens to belong to a man named Walter Paisley. And aside from books, Walter has a thing for collecting occult items. Seemingly, the centerpiece of Walter's collection of cursed objects is the mummified corpse of Grandma Sawyer from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, nobody in the film actually refers to this corpse by its name or even draws attention to the fact that it may or may not have come from Texas, but it is absolutely the same corpse from that movie. In reality, the reason why the corpse is used in the film is that both films shared the exact same art director, Robert A. Burns. Burns has gone on record stating that he just reused several props from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre during the shoot for The Howling as well, because hey, work smarter, not harder. Whether or not this is an intentional connection on the part of the filmmaker is very much open to interpretation, but given The Howling's more comedic leanings and the fact that Grandma Sawyer's corpse is the focal point of the shot, it is good enough for us to count it. Number 6, The Evil Dead, Creepshow, and Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. It's not a secret that the Friday the 13th and A Nightmare on Elm Street series have at one point anyway been a part of the same shared universe. Freddy and Jason squared off in an underrated crossover movie called, um, <clears throat> Freddy vs. Jason, and Freddy made a cameo at the tail end of Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday, a flick that has divided fans for years. If you decide to give it another whirl, however, you might notice some further connections. During the film's third act, protagonist Steven ends up a Jason's childhood home. Upon searching the place, he comes across the Necronomicon from the Evil Dead, which he proceeds to flip through before his attentions are drawn elsewhere. We also see the crate from Creepshow in a full-on close-up as well. Which of course begs the question, why are these artifacts at the Voorhees' house? This isn't the first time that the Necronomicon has appeared in movies outside of the Evil Dead, but given the revelation that Jason Goes to Hell actually started out its life as a proposed Evil Dead movie, shows that this goes much deeper than a simple tribute to another series. Hell, the film's director has even gone on record as stating that, to his mind anyway, Jason is in fact a deadite that has been summoned for by his mother. No, no joke on that one, by the way. Number 5, Gerald's Game and Hush. Mike Flanagan has been responsible for some of the most acclaimed horror films and television series of the modern age, with numerous heavy hitters like Oculus, Doctor Sleep and The Haunting of Hill House under his belt. And whilst there are small nods to one another found throughout his work, it's two of his most celebrated projects that have the most interesting connection. Several times throughout Gerald's Game, we can see a novella on the shelf above the bed that Jesse is handcuffed to. The title of this book is A Midnight Mass, and its author is none other than Maddie Young, who was the lead character in Flanagan's brilliant suspense thriller, Hush. It's a pretty cool reference when taken on face value, but it gets even better when you realise that this was actually an act of foreshadowing on Flanagan's part, his latest show for Netflix, which just so happened to be Midnight Mass. Clearly, this was a project that had been rattling around his mind for quite some time, and seeing the seeds being sown as far back as 2016 shows that Flanagan clearly has many, many more projects waiting in the wings for us. Number 4, Dead Silence and Saw. 
Despite both of these films being collaborations between James Wan and Lee Whannell, Saw and Dead Silence could not be more different in terms of their style and tone. Where the Saw series started its life as a grisly procedural thriller before transitioning into a gorehound's wet dream, Dead Silence is a much more reserved and sinister supernatural affair that was more reliant on mood and suspense to get under the audience's skin. And yet, in spite of them being worlds apart from one another, the two films seemingly take place within the same universe. Whilst exploring the house belonging to deceased ventriloquist Mary Shaw, protagonist Jamie and Detective Lipton discover Mary's doll collection. As the camera creeps through the room, we can actually see Jigsaw's puppet pal Billy propped up against a support beam in the centre of the room. Images and drawings of Billy have of course shown up in other James Wan films, but Dead Silence still remains his only physical appearance outside of the Saw franchise. Well, you know, scary movie doesn't count. Number 3. Dog Soldiers and the Descent for a time, Neil Marshall was the hottest thing in indie British horror. His one-two punch of The Descent and Dog Soldiers showed him to be a director of immense skill that could conjure up big scares on very modest budgets. Both films, in fact, have gone on to amass devoted cult followings, but a lot of people aren't aware that the two flicks are in fact connected. The connective tissue between the two is rather easy to miss, but those with keen eyes and ears will be rewarded. The first and most obvious note is when protagonist Sarah falls into a pit that's full of the bones of the crawler's victim. Victims. In a blink or you'll miss it moment, you can see the overly large skull of a werewolf amongst the chaos, an actual prop from Dog Soldiers that was slipped in as a nod to the director's previous film. The connections though run even deeper when Sarah discovers an old army helmet with the name Oswald on the brim. This helmet actually belongs to Eddie Oswald, a character that is talked about by Sergeant Wells in Dog Soldiers, and clearly he met his fate at the hands of these terrifying creatures. So a crawlers versus werewolves movie when? Number 2. Halloween and the Girl Next Door. Given the tremendous influence that John Carpenter's masterpiece Halloween has had on the landscape of horror cinema, it would only seem natural that countless writers and directors would pay tribute to his work over the years. Which brings us to The Girl Next Door, a particularly nasty little film that tells the harrowing story of Meg, a young woman who is confined to her disturbed aunt's basement and subject to all manner of torture and sexual violence by her cousins and their friends. It's an understandably unpleasant experience and one that surprisingly exists in the same universe as Halloween, as the town of Haddonfield is referenced several times and it's implied to be nearby. Aside from the Haddonfield connection, The Girl Next Door was also written by the scribe behind the ill-fated Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, giving this one a greater sense of legitimacy. Number 1. Black Christmas 1974 and Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Meta slasher mockumentary Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon is chock full of winks, nudges and outright references to numerous classic slasher movies and villains, but perhaps its most interesting connection is also its most well hidden. See, partway through the film, we're introduced to Leslie's mentor Eugene, a man who speaks of his own brief stint as a killer. He talks about how he predates the likes of Michael Myers and Freddy Krueger, but never reached the same heights of notoriety. The details of his murders also match up with a certain festive killer that was never caught, namely the mysterious Billy from Bob Clark's seminal Black Christmas. Eugene claims that he never got the attention he deserved and he's largely been forgotten to history, which is most likely a commentary on Black Christmas itself being more of a cult classic than a pop culture phenomenon like Halloween or Friday the 13th. Now this detail isn't explicitly written into the script, but genre enthusiasts could easily discern his identity, and the film's director has confirmed on more than one occasion that Eugene was intended to be Billy, but for some reason it never quite ended up that way explicitly. So that's our list, what's what you guys think down in the comments below, how many of these references did you pick up on? And are there any cool easter eggs like this that I missed? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.